that's for you, Dustin Hensley. I'm now rec recording, buddy. So anyway, love that. Joe Martinez, love that, man. Your organization's growing 11,300 APV this past week. Super good stuff, buddy. Two new unique riders, uh, not surprised, both of them from the Joe Martinez organization. Uh, Sebastian Bennett, 1,551. Way to go, Sebastian Bennett. You realize I do want to nickname you Seabass really bad, but I've got to know you better and get permission from you to be able to do that. But I love Sebastian Bennett. That's potential name of the year candidate right there. So way to go, Sebastian Bennett. You are number one new rider of the week. Not to be done by Caleb Moore. Way to go, Caleb. 1,496 in premium. Also part of the Joe Martinez organization. Way to go, Joe. Way to go with your team and way to go, buddy. You got some producers all over that, man. Super excited for you and your organization. That is some good stuff, buddy. Proud, proud of you, buddy. All right. So let's do this. I also wanted to, oh, building a business leaderboards. You know, if you want to create a legacy for you and your family, if you want to do something that not only impacts the people that you go do in personal production, but it can impact your family, impact whole team of people I always look at these leaderboards of the people that are getting ready to do that as long as they stay with it consistently and they do it over time it's not going to happen overnight but it will happen as long as you're consistent on these so we use like to use the acronym share the plan or show the plan and what that is is us talking about somebody about what we do about this business and seeing if this business is a good fit for them for some people it is and for some people it isn't it's totally okay we're not here to convince we're here to sort but here's the people that went out and started sorting this week. Mr. Barry Davis, way to go, sir. Proud of you, always on those leaderboards. Jared Gillum, yes, sir, always on those leaderboards. And you're finding people every day. And myself, um, I'm like a hedgehog. I just keep doing it. So anyway, and it tends to work out. Recruits this past week, we've got Joe Martinez, Jared Gillum, um, Jeff Miller, and James Martinez, buddy, leading the way. Two brand new recruits, part of the Joe Martinez organization. Joe Martinez, man, I tell you, they had a good recruiting month last month. I think they had 13 recruits as a new record for their organization last month. Yeah, Joe Martinez, really good stuff there, buddy. Um, new record for them in that category as well. Hey, and no surprise, you see their group starting to really take off in the production category. So good stuff on that. But wanted to get to this year-to-date leaderboards. So I'm just going to call it the top five because I really like the top five in any category. Uh, top five personal producers year to date uh, as of um, early November. We've got coming into number five spot, Jordan Gillum, 207 applications, $154,532 in premium. Way to go. My good buddy, Mr. Grant Reynolds, still on our leaderboards. Way to go, buddy, representing my friend. Hey, 115 applications, 160,304 in premium. Way to go, young man. Number three, Laura Davis, 237 applications, 166,435 in premium. Mr. Val Zarn coming into number two spot. Way to go, buddy. 156 applications, $173,636 in premium. There can only be one number one. And folks, I think as like end of May, he was like fifth or sixth on our leaderboards. And he is shot up these leaderboards like a rocket and uh, listen to these numbers 211 applications for 219,933 in premium mr elijah carujo and um buddy couldn't be more proud of you went from personal producer already a key leader got your sight set on ao in the near future young man way to go we're going to have jordan laura val and elijah all on the call today answering y'all's questions you heard the numbers, what they've done. They can help you go out there and do it and help a lot of families create a lot of income for you and your family today. So that's it on that end. All right. I don't think I've got any news and notes. We do have a personal, a new agent personal producer call coming up tomorrow at 11 a.m. AM Eastern, hosted by Jordan Gillum. Make sure you guys are plugging that. That lady made 128,000 last year as a 26 year old. I believe that right, Jordan. 26 last year, 27 now. Is that right? Yep. So 128,000 is a 26 year old in this business, and who knows what she's going to make this year, but setting the example for a lot of people. 
you get the opportunity to get on there, watch her live, teach you what new agents need to know, and at the end, you get to ask her questions. And so I would be on there. If you've got people that are wanting to make a difference, be on there and make sure you plug it into that. I believe this Wednesday, we'll also have a live corporate overview coming up, which I'll announce some of that stuff a little bit later on. That gives you an opportunity to plug people into our business that can go in and see if this business is a good fit for them, but you can hear from some of our great leaders that are going out there and making it happen. So that's all I want to cover on my end. If I think anything else, I will let you great folks know. Jordan, I'm going to unmute you, buddy. Hello. There you are. No, I think I unmuted you and right at the time you muted and then I muted you back. So give me a second. All right. Problem is you went to the big screen. Now I don't know how to do it. I can do it from the other screen. Come on up here and join me, Jordan. Just walk to me. You're doing it live here with me anyway. So you're in studio. So it's not like, uh, just close that door, close that door. You guys will get feedback, hear my voice since we're all here in the office together. So Jordan's here live here in the office today. So I can't figure out how to unmute oh, you on you're that. Fine. So anyway, so I know you had somebody you want to introduce in your organization that was going to do book of the month for us today. Yes, and I'm super pumped about this. Uh, First off, I just want to say how good this book is. If you guys are not reading the book of the month, I promise you're also also probably not getting the success you want in your business. These, this really all does and tie together. Just a second here. So it is How Successful People Think by John Maxwell. A very short, tiny book, maybe be the size of like a normal person's hand. It's smaller than my hand. Uh, but really what it's what it's about is just helping you think in ways that you don't naturally do and you can identify in places where you can get a little bit stronger or maybe there's a strength that you have that you can get even better at and you know utilize to get further ahead in your business and i'm really excited about uh the fact that the person covering the book of the month is not somebody that i actually thought uh would love reading <laughs> but he's really been diving into it i'm super excited uh for what this has been doing for him uh, ever since he started he started building right away despite all of the things going on in his life he's definitely had one of the craziest starting stories <laughs> that i have heard from somebody just coming in here trying to get ahead and coming out of a really dark place and man thinking has been ex it's extremely vital part of that process of getting him where he's been going so he's already got an organization he's uh very close to being our first team leader we've had in a while uh, and i'm really excited to hear uh mike great talk on the book of the month for a brief second so thanks for representing our team mike we're really happy to have you Oh, thank you for having me. It's uh, was very surprised with the phone call. Um, but you, as Jordan said, my name is Mike Grave. I'm out here in Tampa. Um, I love reading, by the way. So pretty much all the books of the month, I'm a big fan of. But with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. Um, so one of the biggest things with this book uh, that I've picked up from has been focused thinking, um, which coming from where I am right now is very, very important. Uh, right now I'm working in the restaurant industry, working my way to be a full-time agent here um, and hopefully get up to the point where Chris Cook is, if not a little bit higher, because I'm not one to sit back. Um, with that, focus thinking is key to this. You've got to remain focused on your goals, on your dreams. And that is one thing chapter two and chapter three hit on notoriously, continuously back and forth, going across different ideas. Um, with that, when you are first starting, if you're aware of the things you need to work on as you're going through them, you're going to develop those skills. Where if you are just going through the motions and hoping to develop the skills, it's going to take forever, if at all. Um, it's kind of like playing ball. You grow up, you're aware of when you're throwing a pitch, you're aware of when you're taking a shot, you're learning and teaching yourself mentally how to go through those motions. Where if you're just going up and kicking it or throwing it randomly, it, it's not going anywhere. So making sure you stay on that train of thought to focus on that will really help you a long way in developing the skills you need to be successful. 
Um, with that though, you also need to make sure you're identifying the priorities of what you need to work on. That doesn't mean do the easiest thing first, do the hardest thing first, or anything along those lines. First thing is first. What do you need to develop and focus on to get to where you need to be? And I will be the first one to admit it, I have struggled by Central but I'm very much focused on what I need to develop skill-wise so I can help these families as well as be successful in this field. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, part of that making my priority list is making sure that I have goals set as well as dreams. Your dream should be the end goal. The little goals that you set along the way should be your markers that you're building towards that dream. So you need to make sure you have a very clear, concise set of goals that are easily obtainable. They're very clear, like no, like no delusions, that they're not diluted by any means. It's something you can simply focus on and make sure you hit day in, day out, week in, week out, until you hit your end goal. <clears throat> Sorry, weather's got me messed up. Um, but in order sometimes to achieve those goals, you need to be able to step back as well and look at yourself. Are you making progress? Are you developing where you need to develop? Um, with developing, sometimes you need to be aware of what your strengths are. So people like Jared, Jordan, Mr. Martinez, myself, Jamie Failing, are all coming from a restaurant and service industry background. So people, typically people from that background tend to be a little bit stronger with um, dealing with being around a lot of people, being able to help people out very quickly, going through the motions. But it, sometimes it's tough for us to take that step back and enjoy the peace and quiet and focus and think about what the goal is and make that step. So being able to balance that out and while, so to, Balance out your focused thinking as well as your goals and dreams is key. If you're focused on one, you're dropping the ball on the other. You got to be able to find that balance between the two. Um, this book hits on all of those points wonderfully, and they give you a very, very thoughtful step-by-step -step process on how to focus on it. Um, so with your business, or whether you're just making the calls every day or you're growing your business, Make sure you have your clear, concise goals on point, knowing what you're supposed to be hitting for the day, for the week, for the year. Because uh, if you're not, you're going to end up spending your Monday morning making 15 calls, not getting what you want, getting frustrated, and then going to have lunch and forgetting about working for the rest of the day. Make sure you stay on point with it. Make sure you're staying motivated and make sure you're consistently thinking about what goals and points you need to hit. <clears throat> now, being around people is not necessarily a bad thing, but make sure you're being you're around creative people, successful people. Mr. Chris Cook, Mr. Elijah Carujo, Mr. Joe Martinez, Ms. Jordan Gillum. Make sure these people have been successful for a reason. So you want to be around them. This is going to help you with your focus thinking. This is going to help you with your goals and dreams. So make sure you stay on point with that and you, you're learning from them as much as you can. Because with that, you're setting yourself up to be in a creative environment, in a focused environment, which is going to help you continue to be more successful. You know, make sure you're eliminating certain words and phrases out of your vocabulary that help block creativity and success. You know, phrases such as, it's too much work. Uh, failure is final. It can't be done. Follow the rules, that's not logical. Five things that for me, those five sayings really jumped out at me. And ones I consistently every day try to break or ignore because those ones tend to drive me nuts. Um, but as in the beginning of chapter two, um, Bertrand Russell states, to be able to concentrate for a considerable time is essential, essential to a difficult difficult achievement you've got to be willing to take the time and work on yourself 
and focus on that thinking to hit the to hit those achievements to hit those goals so make sure you're aware of that when you're going through it um other than that i think that about covers my time frame so unless you guys got any questions i think i'm i'm done so but thank you guys for having me on and uh, thank you for taking the time of day to listen to me Great job, buddy. Great job, Mike. I, I tell you, man, I love it. And I, I you know, just for anybody out there and, and yourself included, it's like a lot of people, you know, are just wondering how people make it in this business. And it's really, it's a mental business. And, and, you know, just like Jordan was, was saying to all you guys to begin with, it's just, if you start to think correctly, because thoughts lead to feelings and feelings lead to actions and actions lead to results. It, it, this is the pathway to get you where you want to get to. I, I know I challenged everybody thinking at the first of this call today is like, I believe when you get this business going correctly, that every day in the field, you should be averaging about 500 to a thousand dollars a day, which to put that in perspective, when I got in this industry, I was 32 years old and most I'd ever made in year was 42,000. So do you think I thought that was possible? I certainly did not. You know what I mean? Like that was the most mind blowing thing ever. But, you know, 16 and a half years later, I can tell you, yeah, I actually think I think if you get this business going right, not only is that possible, it's actually a 100 percent certain reality as long as you get your thinking correctly, um, because, you know, just to prime your mind for what we're getting ready to do with these personal producers, folks, is is we have an unlimited supply of people really to go help, right? There's new mortgages. People need life insurance. Uh, over a hundred million people we can go insure in this business. And we're only writing 3000 applications a week. So we're only getting to 3000 and we can expand it so much more, so much quickly with more people and more people running more appointments. And so, you know, I just challenge yourself as we go through this today. Am I thinking the way these producers are thinking? Am I thinking the way they are helping the families? Because if you can capture their mindset, you can capture their success. Does that make sense? So first challenge you to prime your mind to that. And just something I want to share. If you want to achieve something, give yourself permission to believe it is possible. I'm going to repeat that again. If you want to achieve something give yourself permission to believe it's possible no matter what other people will say you with me because a lot of you will you'll get on a call like this you'll get super fired up and you'll be like hey jordan told me to do this elijah told me to do that laura said to do this and i'm going to go out and do it and then you'll go ask somebody else that that's not achieving at that level or not doing things that you're doing and the first thing they're going to say is that won't work you're crazy. Why would you do that? And we tend to, as human beings, take those people's advice, even though they're really most of the time not where we want to be. And then we go and we fall into the, the category of, okay, we never follow through with what you hear. I just dare anybody today watching this producer panel, I dare you to actually take action on what we're going to talk about. If you will, it will absolutely, if you can do it consistently over time, not just do it for a day, not just do it for a week, but do it over a period of time, it will absolutely change your business career here at Symmetry Financial. Just priming you up. Thank you, Michael. That, sir, was awesome. Really good stuff, buddy. Appreciate you. Love that we got new people speaking on, on those calls. That is some huge stuff. So, all right. So, producers, Laura, Jordan, I'm going to unmute all of you. And don't remute yourself because it's going to be hard. Me, I'm thinking, I don't know. We're going to see. Um, problem is you may have to actually quit if we get background feedback. So we're going to see. So I've got Elijah, Laura. Let me look. i got to find Jordan. On my phone. Al and Jordan look like they're still muted. Yeah, I'm going to find them. I'm just, good part is when you got a lot of people. This call is packed out. 64 people on here right now. Hey, we're going to impact 64 people's lives. They're willing. No, just, no, just stay in here. I got you. Keep your door short, Jim, Jordan. 
Jordan, give me all the background feed Nora. She's too excited. All right, Jordan, I found you, buddy. Boom. There we go. I got you, Jordan. Laura, I got you. You say something. Yep, I'm here. All right. Elijah, I know I got you, you big bell. I know I got you, buddy. All right. Let's um let's go through some questions I got for you folks. Um let's start out here. Boom, boom, boom. So Elijah, I'm going to start with you on this one. How long does it take you per appointment? I think it's a great question for you, buddy. Um, if I'm running appointments in North Carolina, if I write the app, it takes about an hour. If I write them in Jersey, if I write the app, it takes about 30 minutes. They're, okay. they're much, much uh, more ready to get down to business up north. Um, yep. I know whether or not I'm going to write the app within 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. You know, that's something that I certainly always found was a commonality was um, if I knew I was going to write the app, I knew it quickly. Also, if I knew I wasn't, I was going to also be out there quickly. <laughs> so does that make sense? Like I wasn't going to hang around or anything like that and, and discuss the finer points because you know what? I knew I had other families to go protect. You know, think about do you have that or do you sit around with a person for four and a half hours and, and you know, you're like, you know, because a lot of us can be busy, but we're actually not accomplishing something. And how we impact people's lives is we protect them, right? And so, you know, you got to think about that. Jordan, real quick, your average appointment time for you. What's your average appointment time, buddy? I'm writing the application um, 40 minutes. If I'm not writing the application, 10. Boom. Laura? Same. It takes me about an hour if I'm writing yep. applications, uh, sometimes an hour and a half because I might have multiple in the home. Sure. Um, but I'll know within, within 15 minutes if I'm writing an app or not. Yep. That's the same here. Val, what about you, buddy? Closer to what Laura said, probably an hour, hour and a half if I'm writing it and a good 30 minutes even if I'm not. So, yeah, a little, little bit longer for me. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, how long does it take? Sorry, I'm reading these as we go. How long does it take when doing apps and long? How long does it take when not doing any apps? Sorry, you guys already did that. How much time do you give yourself between appointments? All right, so we're doing virtual appointments. Any of you guys, okay, so Jordan, Laura, Val, Elijah, I'm going to ask the same question. Any of you not doing virtual appointments and doing in person appointments right now? Laura? I'm 100% virtual. Okay. Val, what about you, buddy? I would honestly say 95. Uh, I've ran a couple in person, right? only a couple. Right. So 95%, we're saying at least in a, uh, keep in mind, these are the top four producers. We're saying that if we wrote a hundred apps, 98 of them, I would say in this group are all in person because three of our four are all running virtual appointments. Um, how much time do you guys give yourself between appointments? Elijah, start with you. Uh, I like booking um, every 30 minutes because if I get zorched, I'm not trying to mess around for an hour um, and, and have my time be lost. And so I book, if I book an appointment at one, I'm booking another one for 1.30 and then two and 2.30 and so on. If when I'm dialing, if they give me weak language and it sounds like it's not a very solid appointment, I'll even double book them and I'll book two people on that same time slot. Um. Very important. I love that because I know when I was running in person, I would book hour and hour and I'd train agents to do that. And they'd be like, there's no way I'm going to do that. And I was like, well, do what you want, but it's going to be harder. You write as many applications as I do uh, because you're, you're doing that. So I love that, um, that you're doing it. So every 30 minutes, take note. And he's the number one producer, not by a little bit. He's the number one producer by, by almost 50,000. So, you know what I mean? So, um, it, you know, it's take notes on that, folks. It's not a bad thing. Jordan, what do you do? Um, I book my appointments every 30 minutes as well. Um, if I find myself with just a low appointment day, like I'm just doing a makeup day, I'll do it every hour. But um, Grant, actually, I learned that one from Grant as well, Elijah, to book them every 30 minutes virtually. Um, because what it does is it'll teach you how to be more efficient in the appointment to actually stay on the topic. Uh, I feel like my longer appointments, I may not actually write what I need to write for that family, 
because I'm too busy negotiating rather than helping the family. So I book mine every 30 minutes as well. Um, and I mean, you don't really need a whole lot of time between appointments right now. There's, there's no reason for a bunch of time to blow between the appointments. Um, if I've got people where I can feel like maybe they, like, I don't know, I don't really know how to explain this super well, but if I've, if I've got like a rude person who is just like, just give me the prices or something, like I said, I could get that done in 10 minutes. So sometimes I'll schedule those every 15 minutes just to be able in case one of them ends up not being rude anymore once, <laughs> once we get a price to them. Right. So yeah, it's about every about every 30 minutes though for the Zoom. I like it. So here's a hint. If you're out there and you take your notes, 30 minutes would be a good thing to follow. So make sure you guys are looking at that. Here's another great question. What's the best way um, to ensure consistent money coming in. Laura Davis, we're going to give this one to you. What's the best way to ensure consistent money coming in as a personal producer? Well, you have to have enough resources, number one. Um, you also want to sit with enough families, which actually means the appointment was ran. You know, somebody showed up to your Zoom session and you guys talked about insurance. So that's a sit. You want to make sure that you have at least 12 to 15 if you're full time. And I would say eight to 12 if you're part time, um, because out of that, you, you might sit with half. You know, I mean, now doing everything virtually, I'm booking 20 to 25 appointments a week simply because some folks are going to tell you no. And some folks are not going to be there, you know, for whatever reason. So um, you just want to, you want to make sure that you have those sits. You want to make sure that you resolve all of your leads the week that you get them. Um, we want to try for a 90% resolve rate, I believe was the statistic in symmetry is what they said last week on the, on the conference calls. But um, just, you and you know doing everything virtually now you can dial at any time so you know i'm dialing every day i'm dialing every other day you know if i'm run if i'm really booked up for appointments you know and somebody stands me up and i have an, an hour in between there i'm on the phone booking appointments for the next day or for that evening if i have an opening uh, all of the white space in my calendar, if it's not blocked off, that's where I'm putting those appointments. I'm just plugging those appointments right into it. Um, you also, to be consistent, you want to book your appointments same day or the very next day. Um, you know, two and three days out, it used to be okay when we were running in the field. Um, you know, they might be there, but now it's too, it's too easy to forget to have a virtual meeting. So you wanna book them the same day. Those are always the best, but if you need to, the very next day. Yeah, I love that. And um, th that's huge because, you know, I wanna to go to something you said, I was taking notes on it, Laura, resolving your leads. Um, one of the best ways for you to become profitable in this business, and brand new agents can sometimes miss this. They think you take a lead and, and because we've all thought different things about it. don't beat yourself up Just make sure you correct this but you take a lead remember that's a family that's looking for coverage this is really the proper way to think about that you're not bugging them if you call them 15 times that day when you think you're bugging them you're probably thinking of yourself as a salesperson and really you're just a person that has a license to protect a family and you're the one that can protect them and if you don't get a hold of them you can't protect them that's the way I thought about it. So I never felt if I was calling Jordan Gillum uh, 8.30 in the morning or 9.30 at night, I never worried about it because I knew that was my job. My job was to get in touch with her. And um, anybody want to comment on that about resolving your leads? I uh, One thing that I do. Well, you have to have the right mind. I'll go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Mindset's key. I'll let you talk about that, Laura. Go ahead, Elijah. <laughs> One thing I do is when it comes to uh, resolving leads and keeping track of that, if you're getting leads every single week, which if you have a GMR, you are, um, I, I have a PDF of that lead batch and I title it the date that I got it uh, and how many are unresolved in that batch. And every time I go back through and I call, if I get a yes or no from somebody, I go up and update how many are unresolved to keep track of it. 
And if you do that and you monitor what you have unresolved, it'll allow you to control profitability that much more rather than it just be some random thing that you, you don't have no control over. Uh, because if yeah. you know, okay, I bought this lead batch, there's 30 unresolved here. I need to go call these families. So that's huge. That's huge. And it's just huge for profitability. Like everybody's saying folks, I so just, just um, definitely pay attention to that. What do you expect? Here's a question from an agent. What do you expect after your first 90 days is up experience versus results? Um, I'll let Val, you talk, talk about that. Sure. I think, and what immediately comes to mind on that question is in the beginning, we get paid for our hustle. And as we, as we improve and time passes, we get paid for our skill. So after the first 90 days, if you put in the level of activity, let's say 500 plus dials every single week, you're going to be pretty skillful at that point. And there is going to be a turning point. It doesn't necessarily have to take 90 days, but putting in that hard work up front is absolutely the key because and condensing that time frame because there's no real magic number let's say the magic number is was 2000 dials if you took 3 months to make the 2000 dials you still might not be there fair enough right. so yeah. i don't think 90 days is really i think 90 days is a good projection understanding that that's a good realistic time frame to get beyond that sort of initial nervousness uncomfortableness and uh, i think that's a good projection as far as time frame but looking to condense that is, is really going to be the, the key because 90 days is, is a while. But setting that yeah. expectation of that marathon, but treating it like it's, it's more of a, uh, I don't know, a good analogy there, but trying to get it done more quickly. Yeah, no, I love that, buddy. And you, you really think about it. It's like, you know, what, what do we say? What's one of our four cornerstone success? And we talk about work. It's massive action, constant correction. So during those first 90 days, are you doing massive action? And then daily, um, a lot of people, you know, look at my relationship with Grant. He became agency owner 10 months after here. Grant would call me two or three times a day and ask me questions. Like it wasn't me reaching out to him. He was reaching out to me. Y'all with me? And, and so I encourage if you're a brand new agent, you're going through that. Who are you talking to daily that's in your upline that's seeing success that you are looking to get to and asking them questions? You with me? Like, think about that because it's massive action. Yes, it's constant correction because he was always making little tweaks and, and things because he was curious about what it would take to get to the next level. So if you're out there and you're not reaching that quite level, number one, ask yourself, am I taking massive action? And massive action, you know, could we all agree? Could you work 40 hours a week here? Are you willing to give this 40 hours a week for you and your family and your dream? You know, that's just a question I got for you new agents out there. And most people would answer, yes. I gave my last job 40 hours a week, my last boss 40 hours a week, course of respect. Why wouldn't I do that for my own family? Well, I'm going to give you the 40-week challenge. Write this down. You quantify it this way. And it's hard for most people to do. I would tell you most people don't hit this. Every $35 you do, give yourself credit for an hour of work. Every Zoom session that you run whether it's 10 minutes or an hour and a half, we're going to give you credit for one hour of work because that it's going to average out. Y'all with me? So if that's the two income producing activities of a personal producer, um, because that's the only two ways you can make money here, folks, right? That's two income producing activities. I dare you to work 40 hours a week and not be making over three grand a week. I dare you. Triple dog, double dog, dare you, whatever. <laughs> Take me up on that challenge for the next six weeks. If you're a part of one of these key leaders organizations that you see on this screen or part of our, our thing or direct to me, if you'll take massive action, just work 40 hours a week doing those two things and you ask questions of your upline daily and make those adjustments, not a single person after six weeks will not start to be where they want to be financially. That's my challenge, where they personally want to be financially. Uh, any of you key leaders, what do y'all think? Hey, Jordan, Laura, Val, we all well, want to if I can say something. 
Yeah, yeah, I believe that the 90 days is a good place to start, you know, um, at least give yourself 90 days because there is a learning curve that you have to go through. And the more activity that you put in, the quicker you're going to get through that learning curve and it's only going to make you better. It's only going to give you that 1% that you need to push forward to do more activity. Yep. So I love it, girl. Hey, here's another one for you guys. And this one right here, I will start off with, we'll say Jordan on this one. Should you keep with your lead expense and when, if you should bump it up? Wait, can you re-ask the question? Uh, I'm reading it the way it's. it's, it's <laughs> you keep with your lead expense and when should you bump it up? So I think somebody's asking, basically where they currently are with lead expense, when do you think you should bump it up? What's a proper way to think about leads, Jordan? Absolutely. So one of the biggest things, and, and Grave covered it on the call today, is just manage the words that you're saying and, and understand, you know, what are you really creating when you say what you say? You know what I mean? If you can't do something or that sounds impossible or, you know, I just, I can't manage that kind of level of growth at this point in my, in my business and stuff like those kind of words are also going to keep you from where you're trying to grow and, and grow go and grow. But um, aside from that, you got to look at your leads as an investment, not an expense, which I know at the end of the year, we all do a profitability thing where we weigh out our business expenses versus the profit that we made or our revenue that we brought in. And then we go, you know, who's the most profitable, which we were. But aside from that, you know, what we had to change was even though we did have the lowest expenses, we also had the lowest investment. So we had to change our mindset this year in order to start growing in the direction that was actually going to build a large business. So when you're counseling with your upline, you got to say, here's what I want, right? Here's what I need. Here's what I need. And then here's what I want. And what we need to be aiming for with your expenses is obviously we want to be realistic. The number one rule of business is to stay in business. Um, but when you're applying the right activity, as far as your lead investment goes, you can't lose. You just can't lose if you're doing massive action and constant correction. So then you need to counsel with your upline. And I would say, manage it every month. You know what I mean? Every single four weeks you go at it, you go, you know, I'm getting my leads. I've invested this. I get this back. I do my massive action. I get my profit, you know, and then I do it again. And I do it again. Every single month, you should be looking to increase your, your budget. Because at that point in time, you know, you're going to find yourself in a shorter period of time, your first 90 days, actually doing 250 a week. I mean, I gosh, in 90 days, you should be way past 250 a week in a lead investment. You should have a GMR in place. You know, you should be right around $400 a week, I would say, in your leads, you know, taking a lot of bonus leads on top of that. And I know that that sounds like, you know, like 400 a week, like good, good Lord. But to be honest with you, that's how you make more money here because it's an investment. So look at your investment uh, with your upline. You know, if you've not looked at what you're investing consistently, first off, if you're not investing consistently, that's your first goal is how, what am I, what can I invest consistently? What kind of work do I need to bring in consistently? And then from there, it's now that I'm consistent, where can I grow to? What can I do next? Because every time I've gone to Chris and I said, I don't think I can increase my recruiting budget which of course means that my husband can't do what he needs to do to help us launch where we're going. He said, well, look at your leads. You got to look at what you're investing every week. And I was like, now you're asking me to increase my lead investment. He's like, yeah, but it's because you're looking at it as an expense. The day, the day I increased my lead investment, I made more money so that we can invest in our future. So that's, that's how, you know, change your lingo, change, change the way that you look at what you're doing and do it now. You know what I mean? Change, change what you're doing now so that you can start growing sooner with your upline. Love can it, buddy. Love it. That? Elijah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I would say leads, uh, listen to everything she just said, first off. Awesome. Um, but to add on to it, leads are definitely an investment. They're an expense if you don't have work ethic. Right. Leads are an investment. Uh -huh. unless you don't have That's work good. Ethic. If you don't call leads, you are losing money. And the way Grant would always say it, he's like, he would always joke around. He's like, you got this new agent who got leads and, and she won't call him or he won't call him. And he's like, if, if that's the, the strategy they're going to take, they're better off taking those leads or taking that money, flushing it down the toilet, flipping the lights and saying, big money, big money, hoping they win a lot. 
<laughs> That's such a grand thing to say. That was grand. Leads are, are an investment, yes. And, and, <laughs> but if you're not going to call them, they're most definitely an expense and a very expensive one. <laughs> yes. And so if you're, if you're a new agent, you're wondering, when do I increase it? I'd say start where you're comfortable and then don't be afraid to get uncomfortable. My first batch of leads I ever bought, I remember it because it was right before conference. It was 50 bucks, 50 bucks worth of leads. It's all I could afford. Now I'm averaging a grand per week. Last week I dropped 1300. I called Tina or Tina called me and she's like, Elijah, I got 35 for you. I was like, damn, are you serious? <laughs> I said, I'll take them. And, yeah. um, I, uh, I would say one of the reasons I'm, I'm number one on the leaderboards, and this is not to gloat, but I'm pretty confident I invest more than anybody else leads. I could be wrong in that, but I, I know I invest a lot, but I also work a lot. And so if you're new and you're wondering, when do I increase it? Look at where you're at currently in light of where you want to go. You're not going to make six figures a year investing $100 a week in leads. I hate to burst your bubble. It's just not going to happen. Um, even if you resolve a hundred percent of them. So look at where you want to go in light of where you're currently at, adjust your expectations. The second thing I would say on top of that is look at your schedule. If, if you're part-time here and you've got another job, like Brian Hamby, for example, this dude's kicking tail. He's got a full-time job. I would never recommend to somebody like Brian Hamby, who's working another job. Hey, you need to invest $1,300 a week in leads. He doesn't have the time to go work that many. And so for him, it would, it would be a terrible business strategy to increase his investment beyond what he can work. But there is a good middle ground where if, cause he's, he's working in a different time zone right now so that he can run appointments and, uh, and still work his other job. And so look at that strategically and, and look at where you're, what you're currently investing, what you're currently making. And then I would say work harder for yourself than you've ever worked for a boss who didn't care about you. 40, 40 hours a week is minimum for me. Uh, I, I told Chris, I'm, I'm doing a, um, uh, in our blitz, I'm doing a little sprint for the next few weeks to get caught up on leads. I'm probably going to be working somewhere between 60 and 80 hours a week for myself. Because if you worked that hard for a boss doing a job that most of us didn't really love our previous jobs before we came here, why would you approach this with the same, most people less work ethic than they did before? So if you, if you want to really get something out of this, you have to have the, the combination of work ethic plus a good lead investment. And then those are the two primary ingredients for results. I love it. Well, you know, I even look back to last year's stats and I'll share this with all of you guys. And I know Jordan, Laura, Val, and Elijah all know this. Our number one producer last year did 335,000 submitted premium, Joe Martinez. Um, also, Joe would tell you he was averaging about $750, $800 a week in leads. So if you look back, he had, he had he made around $240 in, in personal production, minus his $42,000 in a year to date and things. He still was netting after leads $198,000 a year. How many people would take that? That's a great business model. If you look at it uh, mathematically, almost every 20,000 in leads, you're actually making 120,000 in return. Who wouldn't take 15, 16, 17, 18, 20% cost of business, and then you could turn that in. It's literally is exchanging 20s for hundreds as long as you go in and resolve them. That's what this business is. is, is. Do you get more no's? Absolutely. The people that produce more actually get more no's in the people that don't. It's the reason it's always funny for me from a psychology standpoint. Um, a lot of people will be like, well, man, how's Elijah do it? Well, Elijah gets more no's in a day or a week than most producers in our organization would get in a month. Well, guess what? That's also the reason he succeeds. You with me? That's the name of the game of this business. It's not preventing them. It's knowing how to accurately account for that. Um, here's some questions. Um, one of our key leaders submitted like this. What would you say is a common mistake new agents make during their in-home experience? Hmm. Laura, we'll start out with you with this one. Not, not talking to them about your role and purpose uh, is a big pitfall that a lot of new agents go through in the home. Um, you have to make your clients feel comfortable 
and you're building trust with them, with your role and purpose. Um, so state what you're going to do today. I'm going to walk through some questions with you guys. You know, then we're going to talk about some medications. Then I'm going to come up with a few options. If they make sense, wonderful. I'm going to help you walk through the application process today. And then we're going to send it to the carrier for approval. Um, that generally takes a week for them to get back with me. So does that sound good? You know, that's kind of a condensed version of what I say in my role and purpose, but that'll give you a good idea of, you know, when you're talking to the client, it gives them a good idea of what, what's going to happen. Um, another pitfall is not going through their finances with them, um, doing a fire drill like Cicely Newsom talks about, uh, on one of the conference calls, you know, you, you have to go through the finances for them because one of the objections that they can throw up at you at the end is I can't afford it. Well, you've just been through their finances. You have just found out what their discretionary income is left over at the end of the month. They already told you that they're not investing in anything. So that money's sitting in savings. Um, they should have that money. So um, let's see what else. Another pitfall would be not listening to what the client's telling you, not asking the right questions. Um, you know, you're, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to go in there and we're there to help them. So, you know, we, we want to push on their emotions. We want to hone in on what's important to them. You know, if you ask the right questions, they're going to tell you exactly what they're looking for. They're going to tell you exactly why it's important for them. Um, they're going to just keep on, keep on honing in why it's important, what life would look like without this coverage for that family. Um, you know, you, you just want to ask good questions and get with your upline if you're brand new. Uh, about those questions, because there are some very specific questions that all of us ask in the home, just to bring out and pull out that emotion, um, to also get them to tell you what the real reason is, you know, what, what is their real why, why did you fill this out, you know, um, not going for the money, not asking for the money is another pitfall, I would say, some, some new folks go through in the home. Uh, people don't want to be sold, but they like to buy. And they also like to be told what to do if you're an advisor, if you're a trusted advisor. So trust equals sale. You know, if they like you and they trust you, you're going to, and, and you show them a product that makes sense and it's affordable from what you guys have talked about then, you know, there's no reason why they wouldn't go ahead and get that coverage. And, you know, go in there with the right mindset. Um, you know, me in the very beginning, uh, my mindset wasn't right going into the home, you know, because I had a lot of commission breath. I needed some money in my bank account. You know, I started off with barely anything. Like Elijah, I started off with $80. That was my, that was all I could spend my first week, you know. Um, so, I had to, I had to retrain my brain into going in there and thinking that I need to take care of this family and not thinking about my, my wallet and, and my paycheck. You know, I, I had to learn how to be a good listener. You know, those are, those are some big ones. Uh, you know, just, Love just it. ask for the money. Don't be scared. Don't be scared to be bold with them too. You know, if they're giving you some sort of smoke screen, like, oh, well, you know, Christmas is really coming up now and I have a ton of grandkids to buy for, you know, okay. Well, I'm sure that you guys have set aside a budget for that. This is the law. This is the law. We're looking in the future. You know, we're, we're trying to protect you for years to come for your family so that it's not a burden. Um, you know, some of those things would really be pitfalls for newbies in the home. I hope I answered that question. <laughs> oh, you know. Found it, girl. Knocked it out of the park. I think you went over all my little heartstrings on it. Um, Val, anything you want to add to it, real quick? You I think I just it can. Only, it doesn't have to be a long process, but just making that connection, like that personal connection with the client, doesn't have to take 10, 20 minutes. But right. uh, great point. Yeah, I think that personal connection is is one of the keys. 
Yeah. And, and, and one of the pitfalls is forgetting to make that personal connection, <laughs> to right. put it more concisely. Yeah. Yep. I love it. All right. So number one producer year today, this, you're getting this question because I think it's the one that everybody asks. How do you get around to think about it, big guy? Oh, I love this. So some people. Fired think, up for you. <laughs> great question. Uh, whoever asked this question, thank you for it. Um, I got seven think about it's in a row last week. And uh, still had a great week. And so you can avoid it. Sometimes it is avoidable. Um, I, I didn't do what I'm about to instruct you guys to do to avoid it. So learn from me because I didn't do it and I got seven in a row. <laughs> so you get to think about it for a couple reasons. Um, if, if you made your options too confusing, they may genuinely need to think about it. And I did that a couple times. If you show more than three, you may get to think about it. And so limiting what I show, I typically uh, like showing three, three main ones. Um, and then also being assumptive from the jump. And so in the beginning, I lay out exactly what I'm going to do. I tell them, we're going to, I'm going to get a couple questions about your, it, this is part of your role and purpose, like Laura was just talking about. I explain my role and purpose, which I just pretty much uh, summarize what the PowerPoint has, because I think it's perfect on the PowerPoint. Um, and I, I kind of paraphrase it for myself. I don't read it. And then in there, I let them know, hey, I'm going to get a couple questions about your home some about your mortgage, some about your health. We're going to go over some options. You guys let me know which one is going to work best, and I'm going to help you fill out the application for that today. And I let them know we're doing this today. And um, I, on top of that, or during the why section, this is where you build value, genuine value. And write this down if you're, if you're taking notes. Price is only an issue when value is not present. Price is only an issue when value is not present. If you get to think about it, it might be because it's too expensive and it may be too expensive because you didn't show them why this is important. I've written $300 a month policies on people who live off social security. And I brought value. I didn't push that option. They picked it. And um, I would say if you do the combination of those things, you'll avoid the think about it. Sometimes I'll get to think about it. Even if I've done all of those, I still get to think about it. And they're like, you know, Elijah, we just don't want to make a decision today. We want, to, we want to talk over the budget, that sort of thing. That's the most common. And what I say is, all right, Chris, no worries. I, I want you guys to talk about the budget. I don't want you guys to do something that doesn't make any sense. My job is to make sure it makes sense. Your guys' job is to make the payment for this plan. And so what we'll do is before you guys can think about it, I want to make sure we can get you approved. We don't even know if we can get you approved yet. So we'll put in an application for the option you think is gonna work best. If anything changes as you and Lauren are talking about it and you need to update, you just give me a call and we can tweak it. You're not paying nothing today unless it's finalized today. And that oh. puts them at ease because a lot of times they think they're paying right now. I'm, I let them know, you're not paying nothing today. You're not gonna get an, in, an invoice from me after this. We just wanna make sure we can get you guys approved. Love it, man. Val. Anything you wanted to talk about on how to avoid, how to get around and think about it? I think, I, I don't think it could be better said than what Eliza just said. Uh, you know, understanding why the reasons and just looking at the notes that I wrote down here, you know, presenting too many options, understanding that that is one of the key points of creating your own objection. If you present too many options or they're too confusing, uh, not being assumptive. And I, I know I'm just repeating what Elijah said, but I'm looking at my notes here and it's spot on. Uh, you know, mentioning in your role and purpose that you're going to be filling out an application today. So I think those are a couple of huge takeaways that, that hopefully people picked up on. One I on, almost forgot is if you're sitting four appointments a week, you're going to notice to think about it a lot more than if you sit 18. <laughs> right. Everything, every problem you face in this business, Grant taught me this can be solved with activity. It was the answer yep. I hated to hear, but it was what I needed to hear. If you're getting a lot of think abouts and getting pissed off that like, man, these leads suck. It doesn't work. I'm getting think about it. The first question I ask people is, what are your numbers? Did you sit with five families or did you sit with 15? Because if you sit with five and you get three think about it, you notice a lot more than me. 
who said, I don't even know how many I sat with last week, but I counted the think about it because I was like, dang, I'm, I'm racking them up today. And I got seven in a row. And so I would say, if, if you're getting a lot, try sitting with booking more and sitting with more families and see if you still get a lot or if it seems like a lot. I, this just leads me to a quick question, quick answer on this. Jordan, Laura, Val, we'll start with you, Elijah. How many appointments a week do you recommend you run if you want to be profitable? Elijah, real quick answer on that one. 18. Jordan? 15 plus. Laura? 15 plus. Val? I would say make sure you're counting your actual sits, and I would say that 12 number would be the absolute minimum. 12 to 15 minimum on your actual sits, not the number that you set. Yeah, exactly. And I love what Val said there. And, and that that was what I hope I'm, when we're all coaching all of you guys out in the field, remember, we realize where profitability kicks in. And what we found in virtual video conference appointments, it to be 15 appointments a week. If you're ever struggling financially and don't have enough, challenge you to do that over six straight weeks and look back and do constant correction during that and not be where you want to be financially. So appreciate you guys on that one. Um, lead investment. Um, lead investment per week, Jordan. What's your average lead investment per week? Um, so just for numbers sake, because uh, being at a higher contract level, uh, my investment is higher just because of uh, sure. the, the A lead correlation. So I take 25 five A leads and eight A leads a week. Okay. Um, well, what's the average right now? Or what do you uh, average? 560 a week. 560 a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Elijah, you, what's your average a week? Um, probably 800. 800. Laura, what about you? Uh, 500 plus. It varies week to week, uh, depending sure. on how many bonus leads I get. To. Val, what about you, buddy? The average is just over 500. So if you look at it, our, our top producers are averaging at least 500 or more per week in leads investment. Remember not lead cost, lead investment, because that generates them 2,000, 3,000 plus a week in income. You with me? Net income is what we're looking for there. Um, if you look at that too, Chris, with all their numbers, one app covers their whole lead bill for the week. One app covers everything. That's the way we look at this business, folks. Jordan, start out with you on this one. Quick answer. What's your schedule when you run in the field? I run Monday to Friday. Uh, because my husband does the recruiting. Yep. So um, I dial in the mornings, Monday mornings around the conference calls, after the conference calls. I book up end of day Monday, all of Tuesday. If I don't have appointments Monday night from dials, I'm dialing Monday night, and I just do that Monday through Friday. I mean, Monday, yeah, Monday through Friday. Gotcha. So Monday through Friday. Laura, when do you schedule and run appointments? Uh, I'm usually calling and running appointments Monday and Tuesdays. Um, I dial every day of the week except for Friday. Um, sometimes I'll dial on Friday if I'm working Saturday. But, you know, like, like I said before, you don't want to book any appointments more than the very next day if you're not booking them the same day. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll run hard Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday's kind of a cleanup day. Uh, I'll book some appointments in the evening. Thursday is a big run day. Um, and Friday is just another cleanup day because my husband also helps with the recruiting. So, you know, I'll, I'll slide in a couple of interviews in there Friday, but that's mostly team building. Uh, and Wednesday morning before the conference calls is team building stuff. Um, so that's kind of what my schedule looks like. Elijah, what's your schedule? Usually. Um, <clears throat> I start dialing Monday morning before a conference call. Uh, after the conference calls, I get back on the phones and I book, I dial Monday morning for Monday evening and Tuesday evening. Tuesday, I get on the phone and I dial for Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday, I get on the phone and dial for Wednesday and Thursday. I run appointments Monday through Friday. If I come to Wednesday and I've got 10 grand in premium written, I use the rest of the week to work with my agents and um, back office. But uh, if I've got a lot of leads, there's nothing stopping me from dialing and running five, six days a week. Sure. Love it. Uh, Val, real quick, what's your schedule for everybody? In the process of changing it, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be working more in less time, if that makes any sense. Uh, really want to condense my work week to Monday through Friday. And same yep. thing, calling putting and this is a this is a very fundamental shift for me but primarily focused on calling in the am primarily 
for that evening or the next morning. So in other words, within 24 hours and then doing that Monday through Thursday. Love it. Love it, buddy. All right. Uh, real quick tips, because we're all, everybody here working from home. Elijah, I know you have an office. Are you able to work from your office now or do you work primarily from home? Uh, I go back and forth. I live across the street from my office. And right. so um, I rented it and, and literally walked there. Sometimes um, because I have a puppy at home, I like working from here and making sure he doesn't chew up the place. Yep. But um, I respect I, that. Yeah. And so where you see me right now is, is at my, my home office. Yeah. So what's a tip uh, for managing your business time while working from home? You got any tips for anybody out there? Yeah, I would say the best tip is to separate work from home. It's honestly very difficult, especially in this business where you, you can't quite turn it off. And so I have set times on my Google calendar where I'm not working. When I'm not working, I am not at my desk because uh, write this down. Um, time has memory and location has energy where you do something. A lot of times there's a certain energy or emotion associated with that spot. So for example, this is why we get hungry at the same times every day. Time has memory <laughs> in the morning. When you wake up, you're hungry at lunch, you're hungry at dinner. When you wake up and you work at the same time, there's a, your body has a memory associated with that where you work. There's a certain energy around that area. So for me, when I'm working at my desk, this is the hub of productivity. I can't relax here. I need to go somewhere else. And so I would say designate a certain spot where you work. Do not let it be where you sleep or where you eat because there's a certain energy associated with those locations in your home. And then also uh, when you're not working, don't work. Set time where you're done. But also make sure you've got enough time to work. Um, I wouldn't say, oh, I'm going to work two hours a day and then hope you get a result. But when you're done, just be done. And don't be where you're working. That's what I would say. I love it. Jordan, any quick tips you've got from working from home that's helped you? Yeah. Uh, biggest one, if you're working from home and your family is also working from home or if you're homeschooling or because I don't have kids. So it's really hard for me to relate, you know, with that, that level of struggle. You know what I mean? But as far as an outside point of view, you know, looking in kind of thing, um, I would definitely say communication is key. You know, making sure that, you know, your family knows what you were there to do. Uh, have them plugged into corporate overview so that they understand what it is that you're going after. Um, but as far as like how your day goes, you, you know, Elijah, that was great. I would just say, you know, make sure communication is clear. You know, my husband and I, as we've, we've been really gearing towards growing this business as much as possible, we are clear about when we can enter each other's workspaces, uh, when we can talk to each other, what are we talking about? Like we'll text from different areas of the room to not disturb the other one with their hours that they have set. So we've, it's communication, I think, is, is absolutely clear and kind, you know what I mean, during this time with your family, to make sure that, that those boundaries are set. Yep, clear as kind. I know when me and my wife, I, when I first started, got in this business, I was working from home, and, and we had kids, and it, we were really good at communicating, okay, because I knew if I was at a job, and you guys will understand this, I knew as if I was going to a job, she couldn't just call me and say, hey, can you come home and mow the lawn, can you take care of the kids? right? Can we all agree? She couldn't have done that. So what we did, we said, we're going to give our business the same respect. And so if the yard needed mowed, I didn't go mow it. We paid somebody else to mow it. Y'all with me? Because I wouldn't have taken away from my job to do it. So why would I take away from my business to do it? Um, well, I need somebody to take the kids to the doctor today. Okay. Well, then you need to take the kids to the doctor today, right? Her, not me. Because guess what? She couldn't have called me from my work to do it. So we understood we had great communication that wasn't the dishes need done. Okay, great. When are you going to do them? <laughs> hey, and you may sound that, and some of y'all may sound like it's harsh. No, she yeah. agreed to that. She said, I'm going to take everything off of Chris because right. he needs to do this business for us and our family. It was right. that clear communication that when it does it now, Hey, me understanding love languages, when I come home from work, guess what? I help out with the dishes, but I do it as a way to help. So there is some dualities with that, but clear communication between spouses of when you're, you're in your work zone, you need to be in your work zone. You don't need to be doing 42 other things. And if they need to go to the doctor, get an Uber. You don't need to be the one taking them. You're working. You with me? I'm just saying, like, you've got to treat it that serious if you want a 
a serious result. And, um, and just understand that that's all really good stuff. All right. So I'm gonna go around the horn, each of you real quick, 30 second answer to this best time to dial Jordan. Anytime. I like it. Laura. She's muted. Okay. She's muted. Wow. When it's on your schedule to dial, having integrity in your schedule. I like it. What about you, Elijah? Platinum dial time is nine to 12 in the morning and from four to seven, but I dial whenever I need appointments. I don't care what time it is. Right. And so the key takeaway there is you dial whenever you need appointments from, I would say eight 30 in the morning to nine 30 PM at night. Um, anytime you need appointments, great time to dial. If you need appointments, pick up the phone, make a dial. And there's no golden time. I want you to know guys, I, I've spent over 10 years in the field one of the biggest misnomers is somebody telling you there's golden time. Don't say golden time because you're going to mess people up because they're going to wait around. And now what they're going to do is think that's the time. It's not. You got a phone number and you got people to call. They need your help. Waiting on getting them help is not helping them. Y'all with me? So if you're working, get to them, help them out. That's just me loving on everybody there. All right. Is it the same time? How do you keep track of business written? Um, Val, how do you, well, no, well, I'm going to ask somebody else. Jordan, how do you keep track of business written? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I feel like that's like so important. <laughs> like, important. Like that should be just as important as knowing where your leads are. You know what I mean? Um, so how do I keep track of business written? Uh, I have opt virtual assistant. Uh, I've got that virtual assistant keeps track of the business that I've written. Uh, but also uh, we have an additional Google Sheets between me and my husband to make sure that he's helping me and I'm helping him with maintaining our, our administrative needs and stuff. Um, we also have the same thing for our teammates. I love it. Um, how often, Elijah, do you follow up on pending business? Every day, sometimes twice a day. Mm -hmm. Carriers know me, but we're on a first name basis. Okay, right. I know all the underwriters. <laughs> Are they going to automatically pay you without you checking up? Yeah. And sometimes they'll, you'll write a policy and they get swamped and they'll like, think about it. They get policies that are submitted. They literally get stacks of them and yours is somewhere in the mix. When you call them, it magically gets moved to the top for them to go review it. And I've had times where a policy was approved, but not issued. I called them. They're like, yeah, I don't know what was, there's nothing needed here. I'll go ahead and get this issued for you right away. Oh, there's seven hundred dollars that was just giant. right. Yeah, so I call all the time. Yeah, remember this is a it's a contact sport, folks. You contacting them, making sure that you and your client are taken care of. And a common question that I love asking them is, um, you know, if Elijah's my underwriter, Elijah, is there anything me or the client need to get you guys so you guys can make a decision? Anything that we can be of help and service to you guys today? No, it looks like everything's good. And I love that they know Elijah by his name. And I love that he has a good rapport with them. I'm telling you, I knew uh, those underwriters, they knew me. They loved to call from me because I was pleasant with them. I wasn't rude because I realized that being sweet helped me out in the long run and helped my clients out in the long run, right? We're an advocate for our clients. So really great tip there, Elijah. Um, so that was that. Let me look at a couple more quick ones and we'll get off the horn here in a minute. Um, what do you do? Um, we'll go with you um, on this one. Jordan, I think is a big good one for you. What do you do if a person won't book within 48 hours and wants to do later than that? Oh, I like hmm. that. So it depends on what you mean by won't book with you because I right. think there's a whole lot that you can do to like make sure that they, because a lot of the reasons why people won't book within 48 hours is because communication is not clear about the process. So um, I've had people before who are like, oh, I'm not off until Friday. I'm like, well, we're not coming to your house. You know what I mean, like you're not, you're not expecting someone. It'll be from the comfort of your home. So like, for example, I've got one that I just sat with this past week and we wrote an app, you know, via phone call actually, because he was a truck driver in Wyoming and she was at home. And I called them and I said, you know, this is how we're doing business now, our normal tie down that's in the script. And they go, oh, yeah, well, we can just do that here in a few hours. 
So exactly. I would just say, you know, to if it gets really, really down to it, like they're, it just, it ain't working. Like they're not going to book within 48 hours, book the appointment anyways, but just tell them you'll follow up right beforehand to make sure they'll be there. And just in your kit and your for your sanity and for your business sake, book another appointment within 48 hours to justify if they don't show. Yep. I love that. Anybody want to add anything to that? Anybody, everybody good? I think that was excellent. Um, another one right here. Can you do a quick review of setting up a critical period coverage for clients? Um, Val, you want to handle that one? Yeah. And I, I love the transition here from critical period coverage to mortgage payment protection I think the concept of covering that mortgage for just a period of time uh, is easier to comprehend. Uh, we're really effectively talking about the same thing, but as far as a very quick presentation on how to cover mortgage payment protection is just say what a lot of clients do because it's more affordable for their budget is cover that mortgage payment for a period of six months, 12 months, or maybe 18 months. And what that means is if something happens to you, John, Mary's going to receive a check that's the amount of that mortgage payment for a period of time, six months, 12 months, or 18 months. And then I ask if they have any questions as far as how that works. So I clarify that it's a, a check. It's a one-time check that they receive and it's equivalent to that. And then when you present the numbers, don't say that it's $26,400 in coverage. Say that that is one year of your mortgage payment. Love it. I love that, buddy. Um, and just to follow up with that, uh, and this is for you, and then I'll go around the horn with this one real quick. Another one for mortgage protection. How much info are you getting when you set an appointment, Val? For me personally, and I don't know, just I'll answer the question how I do it. Smoker, yeah, non-smoker. Yeah, smoker, non-smoker, any major health issues, uh, any you know prescriptions that you might be currently on, um, any other things that might be a concern. That's pretty much what I get as far as background is concerned. I personally don't ask height, weight. I think that might be a little too personal on the first call. I don't know. That's a personal preference more than anything else. So <laughs> smoker, non-smoker, as, as, as far as health is concerned, are you pretty healthy? Any significant health history or medications? It's exactly how I say it. Cool. What about you, Elijah? I do the same thing. Same thing, buddy. Mm -hmm. Jordan, any different? Nope. Same thing. I just wanted All to right. The critical period actually comment earlier is I do exactly what Val said, but ask the following question after critical period concept with each of your family is this, how would it benefit you to make sure that you knew that you would have those mortgage payments paid during that time. Just ask that every single time you do the critical period, just to make sure that they could to comprehend fully what it is. It's just an engagement question. Sorry, but no, I do the same thing. Sorry, Laura, did I mute you there, buddy? I didn't know I had you muted. Yeah. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, I do the same thing as these guys. You know, I'm, I'm booking the appointment and then I'm going to ask the questions. Um, that way they don't feel like I'm intruding on their privacy because I've already booked an appointment. They've already agreed that it's going to be a good time. So then that's when I start asking questions. Um, just non-smoker, smoker, I've got your age here. Uh, when's your birthday? You know, or vice versa. I'm just going through the lead and whatever's written on that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm asking about their, how much they're paying a month. I think that's really important. Um, and then I'm asking their why, you know, like what was your main concern whenever you filled this out or called in about this? Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Awesome. I have, to, I have to interject there real quick. The most yes, important sir. part, Absolutely. the most important part of the best script is where it says most importantly, and I'll challenge you to go back to the best script and find where it says most importantly, that happens to be the most important part of the, the phone script. That is awesome, <laughs> sir. Great tidbit of information. I like it. All right. So got another couple of questions. What's a best practice um, for sharing PowerPoint presentation on Zoom and email link for appointments. I know Elijah, you're you're really at the forefront yep. of this right here. How would you yeah. what would you say to that, buddy? Very very simple. Um, before I answer this question, what I'll say is if you're not familiar with Zoom, go watch some very simple tutorials on YouTube. Um, I've had a couple of people call me like asking for help to like walk them through it. I'm happy to, but I'm not tech support. It's not my strong suit. So. If you're, if you're unfamiliar with Zoom, just go watch a couple of tutorials. But the way that I do it is I have the Zoom add-on 
to my Google Calendar. If you're using iCalendar or another calendar, it doesn't quite work as seamless. But when I've merged it with Google Calendar, when I put the appointment in there and I put the client's email, it automatically emails them a personalized Zoom link. They can see the appointment time. They can see the Zoom link. They can see the password. They see me, all that good stuff. Uh, when they're on there, when they click in, you'll have to admit them. Uh, before I share my screen, I get to chat with them for a little bit. I build some rapport like this, and then I go share my screen. And if you want to know how you share your screen, at the very bottom of your Zoom, there's a green arrow that just says share screen. <laughs> and so you click that, and then you click your desktop. And then you share your desktop. Um, make sure your wallpaper is nice and your desktop doesn't look like uh, a computer hoarder. And, uh, and then you click your Zoom PowerPoint and you put it in presentation mode. That's all I do. I love it, man. I love it. All right. So I'm bouncing around here, making sure I've got all of just primary. I know we had a ton of great questions today. And I apologize. We won't be able to get all of them. But I will say this. What we will do is have another one of these very soon just to see if we clean up any of this because I know this has been a great success and getting a lot of great feedback and text that this is helping a lot of people. Um, here's a any you know I guess with this one right here and I'm going to go to yours Val to see if you had any other questions that I didn't answer on yours. Any business? I think we got all yours Jordan I think we really got the primary points of yours. Well Betsy from Mark got you there. All right um, here's a quick one. I think this will be good for you guys. Go around the horn here. Jordan, I'll start with you. Um, Jordan, in your business, uh, you know, I know you're a personal producer and keep in mind, these are our top four personal producers. Do you recruit? Does your business recruit? Absolutely. We're, okay. we're one of the top recruiters. Yep. Laura, what about you and Barry? Absolutely. We are too. <laughs> Val, do you recruit? 100%. I won't mention who was the number one key leader last <laughs> week or last month in, in the whole company. Oh, my bad. Was it you? <laughs> all right. I'm gonna get, all right. I owe you lunch today then. My bad. Right. You smoked hey, Joe. You, you smoked Joe. You beat him 13 to 12 then. My bad, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to take you to Crystals though. So uh, there you go. Um, Elijah, what about you? Do you recruit? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is one thing that I discovered many years ago, and it blew my mind once I discovered it. And you, any of you chime in on it, the psychology of this right here, because I want to leave you guys with this. I've never seen a top producer that wasn't also recruiting. You with me? Like, I've, I've seen big producers come and go, but I've seen the consistency like if you look at producer panels that are done on the Wayland agency the Pritchett agency massive organizations they're also recruiting at the same time because there's a certain thing that's happening when you're sharing the plan and showing the plan in your business it means you believe in your business and it's selling yourself on how great this opportunity is each and every week and as you get better at that that is a presentation it means you also get better at presenting to clients on the other side there's a psychology that happens in that business. And you're not just thinking about the present, you're thinking about a future and seeing yourself growing a business, which also helps you be a better producer. So just notice that there's a direct correlation from the people that are sharing the plan to the people that are also producing the most, because it's how they're properly thinking about the business. Any one of you four want to add anything to that? Because I think that's an important thing. It's something that I've always taught, but I haven't rarely ever seen a producer's panel, maybe one or two people on it that don't recruit. But for the majority of top producers across Symmetry Financial, you notice they are also recruiting. Y'all with me? And you'll have new people start and anybody speak to this psychology. Well, I want to wait to show the plan until I have success. I promise you this, if Grant Reynolds waited till he had success, Elijah Carujo wouldn't be on this team today. Right. right. And he was the 10th person on his list. And he, <laughs> he was so bad at it. He thought he was trying to sell him insurance. But you know what? He did it because it's something I said, Grant, if you want to be a great personal producer, if you want to get that part, can you also be open to going out and building a business at the same time? Because it'll help you. Did he understand it? No. 
What he did was, though, have faith, and he went out and executed it. The tenth person he talked to, the other nine didn't do anything, was Mr. Elijah Carujo. Elijah, you want to speak to any of that? Yeah. The thing that I've, I've, I've loved uh, that Grant would compare recruiting to was the game of golf. He loved golf, and yeah. he's terrible at it, but he loved yeah, it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> and, and, uh, he would say he would compare recruiting to golf because a lot of people, myself included, came to this business – and there's an element of skepticism. And therefore, uh, the thing that I said was, I want to make sure it works first. I want to make sure I can make money before I recruit people. And he pushed back on it. He said, well, think about the game of golf. He's like, have you ever played golf? I was like, no. He's like, well, um, if you wait till you get good at the game of golf, why does that affect, why should that affect somebody else's opportunity to also want to play the game? Like you could end up being terrible at golf or hating golf but if you wait until you get good, that doesn't change how good of a sport golf is and how it could be to somebody else. And so you may be awful at golf. Um, you may hate golf, but that shouldn't stop you. You shouldn't wait till you get good at something before you tell other people about it because there's enough success stories here that you can borrow. You don't need to write your own before you can tell other people about it. And um, that's, that's what I would say. I love it. I love it. Jordan, Laura, Val, anything you want to add to that? Um, I would like to actually, I think it's in regards to recruiting and production being hand in hand, it had like relevant to the chapter I just finished from the book of the month, which is possibility thinking. A lot of the times what ends up happening is a new agent can come in here and, and check our system out, apply it a little bit and find out it's really hard. You know what I mean? And then they start thinking of innovative ways to change what they do. And, you know, you can read that chapter and think there's got to be more than one way to make this happen. When in reality, the possibility and thinking needs to be applied towards the possibility that the system works. You know what I mean? Doing the system is what's going to get me where everybody else is. And I, that's where I want to be. So when you recruit and you're sharing the plan, it builds your belief in the system. So possibility thinking can be applied towards your business. And that's why builders are better producers than just standard producers because standard producers don't hundred percent believe in what they do. They're always looking for the next easiest, best thing, which is why producers quit. And, you know, I, I think you're a great example too, because guess who you recruit recruited and she's always been one of our top producers, Miss Laura Davis. <laughs> right. And, and I promise you, you know, Jordan, as you look back at your career, there's a lot of times you probably wanted to quit and thought about quitting, but you had Laura Davis. That's right. Couldn't and that out. helped you give belief in that you could have a bigger and better future because Laura Davis was out kicking tail and taking names. I promise you it was the same thing for Grant Reynolds with Elijah Carujo. Y'all with me? And so when we're teaching well, you to recruit folks, it's because we care about you. So I want you guys to know. If I can add something in there. Yeah, if I can add something, Chris, um, you know, it's not our job to go and find the person that we think is going to be good at this. It's our job to give everybody the opportunity and the ones that believe in it or see something in it, they're going to take it by the reins and go with it. You know, so that's why we STP. That's why we you know, call these people. That's why we go through the interviews and all that is because it's our job to offer the opportunity and the right person is going to see something here and they're going to take off with it and they're, it's going to change their life. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to give them long enough to, you know, what you pray is they find somebody, but it allows them to get long enough to incubate so they can grow into the person and the leader that they, they can be. So guys, Hey, I know we went long today. I know it. I'm so proud of you guys. We only lost six participants in the past hour and like whatever, half. But you know what? This was valuable training. We wanted to take our time with you guys today. We're going to be doing more of this in the future, uh, some more styles like this. But we wanted to take a lot of time today to help you guys with personal production. These, All these studs out there are going to be hosting Zoom session this week challenge you guys get on there be participating with them be making dials with them see if you can make more dials in an hour than they do i challenge you to take the 40 hour challenge and apply that to your business and, and it won't make it and see if it doesn't make a 
different in your business. So you guys have so many resources out there. We have the 12 o'clock national call coming up for anybody who wants tips. Thank you very much, Jordan Gillum, Laura Davis, Falzar, and Elijah Carujo. Appreciate you guys so much. Very grateful for you guys. Yeah, everybody have a great week. Thank you.